Enabling Cloud C2 as a service so it'll start on boot and exfiltrating loot with a land turtle, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen and on this dose of Technolust we are continuing where we left off with our Cloud C2 setup. So if you haven't already gotten in on the series, watch episodes 2701 and 2702. So to recap thus far, we have downloaded the Hack 5 Cloud C2 Community Edition, which is a free software that you can run on your server in the cloud to access and manage remotely all of your Hack 5 gear from your land turtles to your packet squirrels to your Wi-Fi pineapples to your key crocs and everything in between. And today what we're going to do is build on what we've done thus far, getting it installed, setting it up with SSL, and now we're going to get it set up as a service so that it runs every time that server boots. And that way, when you disconnect from your SSH session, running it interactively, it doesn't all go away and things of that nature. And we're going to do this the right way in Linux, uh, this being the right way in 2020, using System D. Until, of course, that service becomes sentient and aware and tries to take over humanity and, and, um, and then we move on to something else. Or, you know, you could just hack this into your rc.local file, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, we're going to do that and then we're going to exfiltrate some loot with a land turtle as an example. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So picking up from um, last time, we have our Cloud C2 server here in the cloud running and... Uh, it's at slushycon.com, we're HTTPS, everything is all happy. We've got our Amazon light sale, although you could also just run this in any VPS in the cloud. Uh, and we've connected over SSH and we see that this is running. But this is, this is great and all, but as soon as our uh, service ends, uh, our, our server's gonna go down. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control C and shut this down gracefully, is we are going to set this up as a server. So. The Cloud C2 system is a standalone binary. It's a single executable. And the idea behind that is it makes it portable. So uh, it's cross-platform. There's a binary for Windows, Mac, Linux, 32-bit, 64-bit. There's even an ARM one if you want to put this on a Raspberry Pi. And when you run it, it generates a database file called c2.db. And those just live in the working directory of that binary. Uh, that's not typically how a service, when we think of things like MySQL or Postgres or Apache or any of those run on a server environment, but it does make it quick and easy to get started and deploy as we've seen thus far. So now we need to find them little homes. And to do just that, let's go ahead and start moving some files around. Now this of course assumes that we've already run this and you can see here's our cloud C our c2.db file as well as our, we're running community edition Linux 64. Here's all your various different ARM and Windows executables and things like that. Uh, what we really care about right now is just uh, making some directories and moving some things around. So what we're gonna do is sudo move c2 community Linux 64 over to slash USR, which is not user, it's a universal system resource, I want to say, local bin. Okay, it's a good place for it to live. We're also going to make a directory in slash var called cloud c2, and that's where we're going to move our database. So move c2.db to var cloud c2. There we go. Now we need to create a uh, service. And like I said, you could just put this, you could just put the startup command in your rc.local, but that's not the right way to do it. So let's do it the right way. Uh, what this means is uh, system D, which is I believe a intersection of uh, Emacs and, and uh, the singularity is going to start whatever services we want on boot. I mean, you can use a system CTL or a system control um, program to manage those services. So if we wanted to restart Apache, it'd be like system control uh, or service control Apache restart or something to that effect. Uh, so this is going to make it much easier. This is a little different than your Etsy and NetDs if you're familiar with startups on um, some of our other devices. But in any event, to do that, all we have to do is generate a little, um, a little dot service file. And here's how that's going to go. All right, so we're going to do sudo vi uh, I'm usually a nano guy, but in this case, it actually makes it easier to be able to see carriage returns and weird stuff in Vi. Uh, systemd in the system directory, and we're going to call it cloudc2.service. We're going to do i to insert, and I'm just going to go ahead and 
paste this block of text. And you'll see what this is doing. It, it gives it a description. And of course, you'll find this in the show notes. And we're going to call this service cloudc2.service. And it's going to tell it what it needs to execute is in slash USR local bin, the community c2 binary with the uh, host name and what we set up in the previous example, slushycon.com, because DEF CON's actually canceled. And that's not a joke. It's, it's canceled. So I don't know what we're going to do about slushycon, but oh man. Uh, HTTPS, and then we point it to our DB file, which is in slash var slash cloud c2. Uh, and that is on its own line. So that's good. All right. So we're going to hit escape, colon, x, which is the same thing as wq, but I like x. There we go. All right. So that's been saved. Last thing is uh, we are going to make it chmod777 along with all of its other buddies. And we're going to use system control to go ahead and reload our daemons. And then finally, we're going to enable this service by using systemctl, enable cloud c2 service. And it creates a little sim link and everybody's happy. And then we can actually go ahead and start our service. So you know, if we come back over to our browser, we'll notice that if I refresh this page, in fact, it says unable to connect to the device. OK. We refresh. It's down. That's sad. All right. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and systemctl start cloud c2. And immediately, it comes back and we can log in. And we can even see the status of this service by running sudo system control status cloud c2 service. And we can actually see it's running happily. And there we go. Now, because we did that actual enable part here, what that means is it's going to start up every time we boot our server. So we don't need to worry about restarting for patches and things of that nature. We don't need to worry about disconnecting our SSH session. We are good to go. And this gets even better because the Cloud C2 server itself, when you log into it, it's actually going to uh, check for updates. And if there's one available, it's going to go ahead and just install that new binary. So there you go. This makes things super simple for keeping up to date. Now, while I've got you, I'm going to show you real quick how to set up Cloud C2 on another device. This time I have, in fact, a uh, happy little land turtle right here next to the cow, of course. Say hi, cow. And what we're going to do is set up this land turtle with our Cloud C2 server so that we can connect to it remotely, grab a terminal, and all of that jazz. Uh, so let's just go right back over to our Cloud C2. And just like before, we click Add a Device. We're going to give it a name. Um, I don't know. Um, I like turtles. And we're going to choose our device type, land turtle, add device, go into I like turtles, and we're going to hit Setup. Download this C2 file. I'm just going to save it right here in this temp directory. And if I come over to this shell where I have my device.config, I'm just going to SCP this to my land turtle. So root at 172.16.84.1, which is a land turtle. And we're going to place that file in slash Etsy. I actually have to specify a file as it turns out because I know how to Linux for sure. I really do. All right, so that file is there. And actually, let's just go ahead and SSH into our LAN turtle. So SSH root at 172.16.84.1. And we're going to go ahead and escape out of the little turtle shell. And I'm going to show you that there's a few uh, C2 commands that we can use. So if we hit C2 and then hit tab, uh, we'll see that we autocomplete for C2 connect, C2 disconnect, and C2 exfil. So the thing about this is, on these devices, these networking devices like your packet squirrel, your LAN turtle, and your Wi-Fi pineapple, if that file, device.config, is in slash Etsy, it's going to automatically connect to your Cloud C2 server automatically. Slightly different on the uh, Signal Owl and the Shark Jack because they are payload platforms that are going to require using uh, a C2 connect command because you may not always want to connect to Cloud C2. You may have to issue that C2 connect command. But what I'm trying to say here is essentially on your LAN turtle, your packet squirrel, and your Wi-Fi pineapple, with that file there, restart the device. It'll always connect to Cloud C2. However, we can also just force it to connect to Cloud C2, which is what we're going to do right here by running C2 connect. There we go. And now when we come over to our device listing, uh, in just a moment, what we're going to see is I like turtles just came online. Awesome. Click into the, that. And we can actually see, like, OK, we don't have any loot or anything. But look at this. We can go over to our terminal right here on the web. And there we have it. We actually have an interactive shell right here on our land turtle. And I'm just going to go ahead and escape this. 
and go into our loot directory where I already have a log file. And let's say we want to exfiltrate this responder.log. And now I'm doing this through the actual CloudC2 web terminal rather than my SSH session locally because I'm pretending, hey, I'm somewhere anywhere in the world and this is just deployed at the office. So I'm just going to do C2 exfil string because it's an ASCII file. If it was binary, just omit string the file. And then I can even give it like a payload name. I'm just going to put uh, turtles are cool. And there we go. So now when I come over to my loot tab, I see my responder log came three seconds ago. And the source of it is turtles are cool. So if you had a payload, that's where you'd put the name of it. I can download this file. I can actually just view it. It's not all that exciting. But you get the idea. There's a lot of power that can be had with this system. And now you are armed with everything you need to know to get Cloud C2, to get it set up for HTTPS, to get it configured as a service, and to get some of your devices online. So we're going to continue this series. We're going to go ahead and show, like, in just a couple days, how to set it up on your Keycroc here. And so much more. I'm so excited to share this with you. Uh, I'm so pumped. We've got so much great stuff coming to the channel. Uh, Mubix is back with a new series called Practical Exploitation. Glitch is doing some awesome videos. We've got a new series called Ready to Launching with Cody over from Nullbyte. There's so much awesome stuff happening on the channel. And of course, still Shannon with Threatwire every week holding down the fort. Love you, Shannon. So happy that you're killing it over there in Colorado now. Wow. Also, real quick, huge shout out over to Voidbyte on the Hack5 forums who posted a very similar guide to getting this set up in an Ubuntu server that even covers the systemd service set up with screenshots and everything and I highly encourage you if you haven't already go ahead and get involved in the hack five forms there are so many cool people there and I will see you there as well uh, in addition to the discord anyway that's a whole lot all at once uh, with that thank you so much let me know what you think below uh, I'm Darren Kitchen see you next time trust your technolust thanks for supporting hack five Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.